Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, I'm Dan Slagle, Care and Bridging Pastor here at FaithBridge. Welcome to another edition of Postscript. Today we've been blessed to hear from Martin Durham from the United Kingdom speaking with us during our Salt and Light series. Martin is involved with a ministry called Kerygma 180 that focuses on sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with the peoples of Europe. Thanks, Martin, for being with us today. It's my pleasure. Appreciate, to here. appreciate the message that you brought to us. So, uh, obviously, the focus of your message had to do with faith sharing and uh, yeah. especially enjoyed the number of stories that you had to share from all around the globe about doing that. It's no secret, I think, that for most Christians, talking about Jesus with other people is a daunting prospect, mm. something that some people are mortally afraid of. Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think people are afraid to talk about what is, without question, the most significant decision they've ever made? I think people are afraid on different levels. Aren't they? They're afraid that uh, what people might think about them, mm -hmm. uh, afraid of the questions they may get, um, tough questions. Uh, there are different answers really. I think foundational to sharing our faith as we, as we see in the scripture is, is our personal relationship with God. That's the first thing. Um, are we going deeper? Are we cultivating that relationship with Him? Um, because as we go deeper in that walk with Him, mm -hmm. I guess we're, we're a bit like the, uh, the, the, the the believers in Acts, where you read things like they could not help but speak about what they've seen and heard. There's sure. something captivating about walking with Christ and the reality of walking with Christ. And then it kind of overflows from our lives. We're more aware of the opportunities. Now, that doesn't eradicate fear all the time, of course. And even now, when I'm about to start a conversation with someone out somewhere, I'll have those butterflies we say in England. I don't know if that translates, but that kind of little churning in your sure. stomach sometimes. You're not quite sure what's going to happen. Yeah. But my experience is that often we, we build the walls, we build the barriers before we even open our mouths and we think, oh, they're not going to be interested. They're going to think I'm crazy. Are they going to ask me a question about the dinosaurs? How am I going to answer that? What does that, that fit into? <laughs> right. But you know, nine out of ten times, um, that doesn't happen. And, and as we start doing it, so our faith builds. And... And it's as we start doing it as a, as a more regular practice that we find, actually, this isn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. Sure. And, and ultimately, with the fear, and this is perhaps a hard statement, but it's true, I think, and this is why intimacy with God is so important. Ultimately, it boils down to our own pride, what people will think of us. Ah. I can't answer the questions. I won't get it. I, 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 I. And, and that's why intimacy, I would still say, is the, is the bedrock. The focus on Christ rather than the self. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's his message, not ours. And... So you've had the opportunity to do this in a lot of different places, a lot of cultures. Uh, I had the privilege of observing you do this just the other night, even at Cavender's Boot Store. Uh, what are some of the fundamental lessons you've learned about sharing our faith effectively? What are the one or two things that you feel like everybody probably ought to have at the ready in order to do it well? Well, I think, firstly, know that it's God's message. The gospel belongs to Him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not about my clever words, the things that I'm going to come up with, any illustrations or anything. I, I'm just called to share that message with others. And also, uh, it's God who opens the heart. And that's clear in Scripture. I think Acts 16, it talks about how the Lord opened the heart of Lydia to receive the message. And it's good to be remember that because it's, I find that liberating. Mm -hmm. It's not dependent upon me. Um, and the next thing is, therefore, if it's God's work, which it is, I, I need to be listening to what God is saying. So even in the, in the, the shoe store, the boot store that we were in, just asking God, Show me, Lord, is there an opening here? And it may be the man we spoke to, an opening didn't arise. And I wouldn't feel guilty about that. I would have walked out, and that's fine. 
But as I looked at the boots, there was a boot with a cross on it. And I thought, you know, here's an opportunity to ask this guy who's passionate about cowboy boots. Right. And so it's being aware and, and, and asking. I always ask the Holy Spirit to steer the conversation and, and, and give an opening. Even you know, if I'm sitting on a plane going back to London, that's what I'll be praying. I may, I may be sitting next to someone and I'll be asking God, give me an opening here. Just something and I just start general conversation I don't dive in with the gospel just start general conversation and see what opens up what would you say has proven to be the uh, greatest sense of reward that you have received personally uh, from consistently telling people about Jesus that there is nothing more rewarding than seeing someone profess faith in Christ and then move into that discipleship if you like um, for me and, and, then, and then seeing them live that out um, seeing them talk to others about Christ there is nothing for me more rewarding than that and it's God's work and we have this amazing privilege of being involved invited to be involved in that he's Great. committed to us this message of reconciliation um, so for me that's the greatest reward really Great. Well, thank you for your words of encouragement today. They were a blessing and very instructional, too, for our congregation. And thank you for joining us uh, for this edition of Postscript. Uh, tune in next week when Pastor Ken wraps up our series on salt and light. We'll see you then. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.